Dove Call Entertainment presents Spooky Noises. Like all teddy bears, Norman is magical. When the lights go out and everyone is sound asleep, he comes to life. A young girl's imagination runs wild in this warmly reassuring musical story that things that go bump in the night are not always fire-breathing dragons from Puffsville, ghosts from Ghostbury Farm, or even trolls from Trottersfield Snipe. But with the help of her magical tatty teddy bear Norman, can Lisa muster up enough courage to discover what it really is? The place, Lisa's house. The time, bedtime. There's a lightning storm raging outside, wind howling through the trees, the rain beating against the bedroom window. And who knows what may be lurking in the corner of Lisa's bedroom. Now climb those stairs, young lady, and get into bed. School night. You know I don't like you staying up late. But, Mum, just ten more... It's not a discussion, Lisa. You know it's bed early on school nights. All right. But Emma stays... What Emma's mother allows her to do is her business. Now scoot and no more chatter. And before you ask, no TV or messaging. But... Up you go. Come on, Norman. Lisa opened the bedroom door. As she did so, the light spilled across the room. One corner always remained in total eerie darkness. Lisa poked her head through the bedroom door, holding tight to her teddy bear, Norman. Hello? Is there anyone there? You have a look, Norman. Can you see anything? No? Right then, on the count of three, we make a dash for the bed. Got that? One, two, three. And dash, they did. Mum doesn't understand you Not the way you help me Or how in my own way I love you She thinks that all toys must be the same but we her in the same way you spoke to her also she and I and all those years ago you There was an eerie sound, which made Lisa jump under the bedclothes and turn on a torch. Now that was close, but we're safe now. Norman? Norman, where are you? I'm here. You, you, you know, oh, you really shouldn't leave these toys under your pillow. We could suffocate. There's barely enough room for the two of us. You sound just like my mum. Well, if the cap fits... I never really understood what that means. It's... A joke, Norman. Just a joke. Lighten up. I thought I was the scared one. You know, I'm sure there's something horrible lurking in that dark, spooky corner. Look, there's nothing in that corner. It's just your imagination. You say that, but do you mean it? If I asked you to go and have a look, would you? Well, the day is past, it's night at last, bedtime again. You know what's 
despair Just up the stairs, dark corners And you feel the fear rising Like steam from a witch's cauldron underneath your bed Who knows what could be lurking there in those dark corners Enough said! Enough said! When I'm afraid I tell myself a story Or recall a memory from back when I was young Like when your granny was taken to Hamley's and she bought me All those years ago Then you feel the fear tightening Your guts are tied up tight in a knot with dread Then there's a clap of thunder or a bolt of lightning Enough said Enough said Oh Norman, when I'm scared it's you that makes me happy With an amusing little anecdote or game And if the monsters from the corner should attack me And I know you'd do the same Midnight strikes and look And yikes! Just out of sight There in the night Best take care You find your pulse is racing You feel your, your skin, skin Break into a sweat Into a sweat You peer into You peer into the darkness Enough said Enough said Enough said As most little girls do, Lisa had a rag doll who'd been given to her by a distant elderly aunt. Hers was a clown. He was not a new doll. Dare I say it, he was, well, old and worn and stained. Colours faded and, to be honest, he smelled bad. But that was the least of Lisa's worries. What's that smell? It's not me. No, the problem was his eyes. Lisa never liked the clown's eyes. They followed her around the room without the clown ever moving an inch. So, she did the best thing which anyone would do. And that was bury it. Bury it at the bottom of the toy box, never to be seen or heard of again, until... What's that noise? I've just said, it's not me. Here, what's wrong with you too? Looks like someone's frightened the very life out of you. Who's that? Me. Please, tell me who me is. Both Lisa and Norman poked their heads out. They looked to the clown, back to each other, and then to the clown again. I never knew you... It was magical? No, you wouldn't. No, I never knew you were... Was still here? Hadn't died of boredom yet? No, I never knew you could talk. Well, now you do. You never played with me before. I just stand here, ignored. Have you any idea of the fun we'd be able to have if you took me off your bedside table? Well, we were moving house and we didn't... Can it! You've never liked me. And you, Lisa, just keep me around because your auntie gave me to you. That's not true. Here on my own, day after day. When I was manufactured, I dreamed I'd be sold to a child who'd love to play with me. Day after day, playtime after play. Instead, I'm lucky if I get to look into what the other toys are cooking. Oh, I'm your quintessential unhappy clown. 
on My luck just keeps on going down and down Now look here Quiet! We all know you're her favourite I promise to do better in the future Day after day I know the score One day you'll pass me on to a friend You won't give a damn what becomes of me in the end But I've got to say What are you doing anyway? Keeping your bedclothes way up to your neck, I say Pretty clear. What are you afraid of then? Not me. Harmless me. It's that corner. We're. The noises. Nothing but a tree branch tapping on the side of the house. A tree branch. <laughs> Lisa and Norman saw what looked like a creepy looking branch, shaped like a long, spindly arm with a crooked hand at the end, reaching out to try and grab them. See, nothing to be scared of this time. What do you mean, this time? One never knows what lurks in dark, spooky corners. I thought you were supposed to be helping me overcome my fear. Never said I was here to help you. I mean, what have you ever done to help me? I'm your quintessential unhappy clown. My luck just keeps on going down. I feel like I will surely drown. Day after day after day after day after day. The clown, satisfied that he'd now scared Lisa and Norman, went back to the toy box, opened the lid, and as he climbed in, the lid crashed down behind him. That was a close call. It was. I don't even want to think about it, Norman. I need a glass of water. You know what that means, don't you? Venturing over to the sink in the scary, freaky, spooky corner. Norman, enough already. How about we go together? Good idea. Why don't I put on my dad's slippers? They'll keep us safe. Your dad's old slippers? Nice touch, but how does that help? I just like to put them on, Norman. I feel he's still with me when I put them on. He wasn't afraid of anything. Ah, I see. I know you think it's silly, Norman, but they do make me feel better. I get you, Lisa. Go on, put them on. Oh no, Norman, they're not here. They must be by the sink, near the dark, spooky corner. Oh, no. Lisa! Get a backbone, Norman, as my mum says to my auntie sometimes. Is she called Norman, too? Anyway, I'm a teddy bear. We don't come with one. You hear that? What? Shh! Well, I never. Did you ever? A cheeky pair of slippers shimmy forward from under the wardrobe. Curtsy, bevel, and rest. Did you know anything about these guys? Hmm. I had my suspicions. From my earliest days as an infant in my shoebox, I knew one thing beyond all doubt was true. Though my glue had barely dried, Somehow I knew that I'd a destiny beyond that of a shoe. And for years I watched the lucky ones inside. Until she was almost walked the room. I wanna be a tap shoe. I wanna be the same. Shh. I wanna go to places a slipper can't hope to get to. I wanna be in sections, my specialist would wear. I want them to look at me wondering, what am I for? Not wasting my life on some girl's bedroom floor, but dancing every. From my earliest childhood squashed into a shoebox My sister would never let me speak She was always right, I was always left She'd always make 
Wanna be a tap shoe? I meant sister to that. I wanna dance on stages in sync with a top hat. Not sitting round for ages, but clicking with my cane. I wanna turn slip and maxi with dance in my soul. Not stay under her bed with these ears in this hole. Well, come along, sis. It's time to take our fate in our dubs Cause everything is up for grabs Lisa and Norman are transfixed by the dancing pair Incredibly impressed with their dexterity, poise and line the slippers were clearly talented and could certainly put on a dazzling floor show. Sometimes when I couldn't sleep I'd wonder how I'd be I never dreamed my tap dreams could come true I wanna be a tap shoe. We wanna be one too. I wanna go to places a tap shoe gets to go to. Oh, lucky you. We can't have what we're made of. But give your best and see. I've got a leather upper. I've got a plastic sole. And I'm full of foam rubber. But steel is a goal. I won't tell you again, Lisa. Into bed. I can hear you downstairs. And take your dad's slippers off. Sorry, Mum. Jumping into bed now. Thank goodness she didn't come in. Nice to know not all the toys are out to get us. Heartwarming, isn't it? As Lisa crept over to the sink to wash her hands after all the excitement, Norman sensed there was something troubling her. I'm pleased those slippers have each other. Hmm. I think everybody needs somebody. What do you think? I do worry about Mum sometimes. Especially how hard she works. Sometimes I miss my dad so bad. It's especially lonely in the dark. I wish Dad and I had more time together. Him dying seems too cruel. I understand, but it's the cycle of life. We all only have a limited amount of time here. I know, but if I could wish for anything, it would be for him to be here with me right now, so that we could talk and laugh and play. I feel the same about my father, but just thinking about him brings a smile to my face. I just don't want to forget him, Norman. Never. I know you don't. Neither does your mum or your brother. Do you want to talk about it some more? How do you feel? Empty like an aching bed it goes. Some days I don't think of him at all. Day by day you'll find to remember the good times and not 
the bad times, you'll make it through. I remember the good times, especially the holidays. The ones by the sea were best. Apart from when you got sand stuck in your fur on the beach. Which reminds me, I brought this back for you from my last adventure. A bear with pockets. A shell. Thanks, Norman. It's beautiful. Hold it to your ear. Why? Tell me what you hear. Nothing. I don't hear. Wait. Wait, what's that? Yes, I do hear something. A voice. A voice calling me. Who's she? A mermaid friend of mine. Norman pulled out some magical and special glitter and threw it into the air above them. This is Teddy Dust. It'll help us breathe underwater and keep us dry. Keep that shell safe. We'll need it to get home. Now, wrinkle your nose three times. Hold on tight. In a twinkling and with a gurgle not dissimilar to a plug hole, Lisa and Norman were transported into the midst of the deep blue ocean. Wow! Norman, you told me about the ocean, but I never imagined. So much to see. I don't know where to start. Then let me be your tour guide. We can't have you missing out on anything. Ah, Joyce, great to see you. This is Lisa, my human. Lisa! I'm going to introduce you to some of my friends. Everyone's lovely here. Just watch out for the jellyfish, though. In the ocean, jelly never comes with ice cream. I never knew all this was here. You think we spent all day floating all around in this parallel world without any sound? But I'll show you. Think we spent all year among the shells on the seafloor? Well, you're wrong, my dear. That really would be a bore. Now you're here, you're gonna see. But there's a world down here as colorful as anything you could up there. And have no fear, I'll show you every last thing everywhere. Under the ocean, things stay cool. Under the breakers or in a rock pool Though the storm may be raging There's a warm welcome waiting Fish cross nation, man or beast or fool We welcome you all to our home, one and all And now, fresh from his star Role in TV's CSI Crustacea, it's the one, our very own starfish, Graham Gillespie. There's no need to be afraid, not with all the friends you've made. Take Norman here, he shows no fear, even when danger's very near. So take it from me, you're in safe hands, my dear. Cause after this cavalcade, you're gonna see off his fade. Now let's hear it from Claude Crabtree, whose life trading on the ocean floor has given him a hard shell, but he's soft as butter underneath. Hoy vey. Don't get crabby. I'm a crab, I have no choice. I spare my days living in gloom. And every corner is dark in my bedroom. But I don't let it worry me My shell's as tough as tough can be Your fears are just a trick of light you'll see Come on, Lisa, don't just stand on the side, join in! But I don't want to mess up your wonderful song It'd be even better if you had your voice I'd love to, but I'm shy No, you're not Go on, sing! I thought life was full of dread and monsters and ghouls You just do what you are told and follow the rules But you've shown me that isn't so I thought there were dark in places I should be aware of Clowns and faces I should be scared of You've shown me I've gotta go Out in 
into a world as colorful and bright where the light will find me and where in my darkest fears at night you'll be there to remind me under the ocean things stay cool under the breakers or in a rock pool Maybe blowing, there's some hope Always showing, fish, crustacean, man or beast or food You must never be scared of the dark, that's the golden rule I spit there's my no day under the ocean. to be I used rain. to sit and mope, you see, I never and thought I'd go, you see Under the breakers, or in my the rocks Good the things were out to get me, or the people might have said Be on to a storm, it was no fear in my shells and tongs that stuck Well, we're waiting, take our advice, take our break, be cool That is the only, that, that is the golden rule As quickly as they left, Lisa and Norman arrived back into the bedroom, safe and sound and wet. But by the magic only children possess... And bears. And bears. They were actually dry. Norman, that was fantastic. You must take me on all adventures. Of course. Keep that shell safe. I'll keep it with my special treasures. Here in this box is where I'll keep it safe. You know... Watching those clams eat their lunch reminded me how hungry I am. Did you remember my fruit shortcake biscuits when you went shopping? How could I forget? I wouldn't let you. As Norman took a bite of his biscuit, there was a snuffling sound. It got louder and louder and louder, and after one final very loud snort, there was a flash of very bright lightning. And the deep boom of thunder. Ah! They both dove under the covers. Norman, determined not to be caught out this time, took his biscuit with him. What are we going to do? What if it's the fire-breathing dragon from Puffsville coming to toast our toes with his flaming breath? Keep them under the blanket. If we're lucky, he won't notice we're here. Yeah, right. Besides, I don't have to worry about that dragon flame-grilling my toes. Why's that? I don't have toes. It's you he's interested in. Well, thanks a bunch. The noises got louder and louder, and a dragon appeared. It was like no dragon Lisa had ever seen, like a Chinese dragon. It swirled and swished around the bedroom, furling its nostrils and sweeping its tail back and forth. It had brought with it everything Lisa feared in her darkest and most frightening nightmares. The dragon took a hold of Norman and pinned him down. In her attempt to get away from this devilish apparition, Lisa backed steadily towards the toy box until... Ah! Lisa bumped into the clown. You frightened the life out of me. Can you help? Norman's in trouble. I thought the dragon was doing just fine For weeks you completely ignore me But now when things are hotting up you want my help Please! I promise I'll let you out the toy box more Yeah, right! Hurry up! Strike a deal! I'm going to be flame grilled! Huh? Char broiled! Huh? Here is my marker, my deal is this, 
I'll call in the marker when I do your Grammy. My, it could be anything with. Norman, I don't know whether I can trust him. Now, hang on, wait a moment. Time's running out. I never said I agreed. The offer's good for five, four, three. Say yes, take his marker. We'll deal with it later. Two. Yes. And one. The lady has struck a tear. Help Norman! Yes, help Norman! The clown pulled out a fire extinguisher from behind his back and aiming it at the dragon, he squeezed the handle and out gushed lots of foam, completely covering the creature and immediately extinguishing the flames. A small amount of smoke puttered out of the dragon's nostrils and he let out a roar which was, in fact, just a cough. Remember, young Lisa, a deal is a deal. Make sure the bed bugs don't bite now. Are you OK? You did the right thing. I did the only thing. Couldn't imagine losing you. Listen, we need to join the others. Have you collected everything you can spare? Yes. Stupid dragon almost spoiled everything. I have some clothes, some toys, and other stuff Mum gave me. It all helps. Now, the sofa should be arriving any minute. And right on cue, a magical flying sofa appeared. Ah, the only way to travel. Come on, Lisa. All aboard, Norman. Fasten your safety belt. Right. Now, hold tight. Off we go! And with that, the sofa zoomed into the night sky. We'll soon join my friends. We meet at a special place, a secret place, that only a few outsiders have seen. Can't tell you what an honour this is, to meet your friends. The pleasure will be all ours. I remember bringing your grandma here many years ago. It changed her life. Then I hope to follow in her footsteps. I'm sure you will. Hold on tight, we're gonna land. The sofa lands and... It is wonderful to meet you all. With introductions taken care of, there is the sound of a trumpet and all looked to the teddy bear king who wore a crown made of pure golden honeycomb. He indicated for everyone to load up their sofas with some extra boxes that were beside him and then he waved as the sofas took off again and flew to all corners of the land. You see, toys have an important job to do. We collect food and blankets from the teddy bear king and take them to the homeless. In each city, we hand out blankets to those who are cold and don't have a bed to sleep in. We give food to those who are hungry and haven't eaten a decent meal in days. And we listen to the stories of those who are never heard. It's so kind. But do you know what the most important gift of all is? No, what's that? Love, friendship, and a lot of smiles. Imagine a world, a world without friends, with no one to turn to when you're at your wit's end. Imagine a place, a place so dark you despair. And at the end of the road You find no one is there And you turn to go home Only to find your home is not there I couldn't imagine a world without family and friends I know what it feels like to miss someone I've been to a place just after my dad Where I was truly alone I thought I'd go mad And I know that you know Which is how I know that you care For everyone there ought to be Somebody there 
one should be alone Through no choice of their own That's not fair Kindness tends to be in short supply these days. It'd be great to help all those in need. What can I do, Norman? Tell everyone to give the things you and your family no longer need to the teddy bear king. We can take it from there. I'll be sure to let my friends know. It's wonderful bringing a little happiness to those less fortunate than ourselves. Ah, now I know where you've been at night. Every morning I see those muddy paw prints on the bedroom floor. Imagine a world Imagine a world Where there's a place for us all with enough to go round And no hunger, no is, hunger is found No, no one's left, left on their own Through no choice of their own That's Norman and Lisa returned to Lisa's bedroom. The room became darker again as Lisa shivered. She looked towards the dark, spooky corner again. Oh, Norman. I was feeling all positive and optimistic that things were finally going to be okay. But what changed your mind? It's still here. Whatever's in the corner. I was having so much fun helping out that I forgot about that corner and what might be lurking there. <sighs> right then, we must put a stop to this fearful behaviour once and for all. No one can go through life being scared of what might be. We have to face up to our fears head on. Oh, you're so brave, Norman. As my father said to me, and his father before him, and his father before him... I get the picture, Norman. There are times in a bear's life when he has to take a bold leap into the unknown. It reminds me of the time everyone was frightened of the noises coming from howling wood. And what did they do? I bet they didn't hide under their bedclothes. They did to start with. But then we set about finding out what was making the eerie, ear-piercing, terrifying, bone-crunching, blood-curdling... Norman! So in your story, did it take courage and bravery to discover what, or who, was making those noises? And did they stop? Yes. And yes. Well, maybe you telling me your story will make me feel brave, and I'll march right into that corner and stop all this nonsense once and for all. Well, if you think it'll help. The Ballad of Norman and the Howling Wood. It was a beautiful day, the sun was shining, the grass swayed gently in the summer breeze. The bees were buzzing as they took their nectar from the flowers on the plants and trees. And everything was well in Boothby Pagnell, or so it seemed. I often come here when you're sleeping I often come here to do my dreaming <clears throat> Norman! It's a beautiful town with a big blue pond In the shadow of marshmallow mountains The tops are snow-capped this time of year And children play in the fountains but there was one thing that was not quite right, or so it seemed. To one side of the village was huge, spooky, howling woods. Rumour had it that in it were lots of ghosts who couldn't find their way home. I thought this story was supposed to relax me. Stop talking about ghosts and get back to Marshmallow Mountain. If the people in the cheap seats would kindly settle down, I'll continue. A sudden sound broke the tranquility. I turned to see what the commotion was about, and high upon a grassy knoll, I could see the kissing tree had just planted a big corking kiss on an unsuspecting blackbird. You see, this tree was very old and had been there for many a year. And at the end of its branches were a huge red pair of lips. It 
loved kissing blackbirds. I looked into the distance and could see a cloud of dust coming straight towards me. Within a matter of seconds, a sports car pulled up. Sitting in it were my friends. There was a wizard, a wonderful, brilliant man, who knew everything that there is to know. Freddy Falk, a retired army officer, who had his bravery medals, they're all out on show. And Francine Keppel, who couldn't talk, but tooted her spout as she walked. And finally, there was Dennis, a bright blue centipede, who wasn't always blue, but had once chewed his biro pen at school, swallowed the ink, and in an instant his whole body turned blue, and it had never faded or changed back. Good morning, young Norman. Morning, wizard. You all seem in a hurry. Auntie Pam telephoned me only moments ago. She's in a complete fluster. What's the problem? She says the woods are howling again. I think she's making it all up. <laughs> there hasn't been a sound from Howling Wood in years. Why don't we go there and see for ourselves? I'm sure there's a harmless explanation. That's why we've come for your help, young Norman. Can always count on you to come up with a sensible solution. You're bold and brave. Hold on. I can't imagine that happening. No further interruptions, please. We must investigate those noises. Travelling faster than the speed of prune juice, we all arrived at Pam's house. They knocked on the door, and it wasn't long before Auntie Pam stood in front of them as white as a sheet. Auntie Pam was usually very jolly, but today was different. This was a very worried-looking Pam. Norman! Every day for the past week there's been a terrible howling coming from the woods. It's been getting louder and louder. Maybe it's just the wind. Oh, it's far more spooky and horrible than that. You must go and investigate. You're brave and bold. If anyone can help, it's you, Norman. Oh, brother. I agree. But before we go, we need to stop off at my house, collect a few things. Can't go off adventuring without the right equipment. It was then that we heard the noises that had made Auntie Pam so nervous. They sent shivers down our spines. Jumping into the sports car, we zoomed to Wizard's house, collected torches, a compass, rope, some chalk to mark our path so we could find our way out again, and a cricket bat, just in case whatever was making the noises should turn nasty. We parked at the edge of Howling Wood and took our first step into the darkness. They turned on their torches and, step by step, ventured deeper into the dark, damp, eerie wood. It was darker and scarier than any of them could have possibly imagined. Snap! Snap. All heads turned to Francine, who had trodden on a twig. As it broke, the twig's cracking sound was so loud that it echoed around the woods. Two birds, scared by the sound, broke into flight, flapping their wings and shooting skyward out of the woods. Shh! This way. We began to move onwards. Freddy took the lead, wanting to show everyone that despite being retired, he still had nerves of steel and nobody could make his bones quiver and quake. Dennis wanted to point out that Freddy was in fact a fork and didn't have bones, but thought it best he keep his mouth shut. Suddenly, something caught Norman's eye. It was very faint, but there was something there, right there ahead of them. He flashed his torch and searched into the blackness, at first, there seemed to be nothing but trees. He continued to stare, and it was then that he saw them. A pair of eyes, there in the darkness. What? The others stopped. Francine, Freddy, Dennis, and the wizard crowded around Norman, who couldn't take his eyes off the two eyes before them. The eyes blinked, and then the silkiest voice came out of the darkness. Hello, Norman. I have been waiting for you. Norman and the others shone their torches, and there before them was the most beautiful tree that any of them had ever seen. You must be Betty. Uh, Betty Bark, the movie star. All of me, from my roots to my canopy. I am the embodiment of photosynthesis, and my sap is just boiling. All were in awe of the tree before them. Betty lowered one of her branches, and the wizard kissed it. 
I'd heard there was a Hollywood star in these woods, but always thought I was barking up the wrong tree. Would you believe it? Once I was in every film that they made. Once of all the scenery, I was the highest paid. I've met every movie star. I've dined on beluga caviar. But these days I no longer see. by Greta Garbo She really was a star though Twenty years ago I acted with Tom Cruise He made me look less wooden And although in looks a good un, He's really not the co-star I would choose Once I was in every film that they made You could say the course I really have stayed I've met every movie star No matter who they think they are But now they say my pollen makes them sneeze Cause they can't see the wood Or the trees And I All the scenery, I was the highest paid. Everything you know was luck. Do the name of Betty Bob, and time can't take the greenness from my leaves. Even if they can't see the wood for the tree. Do you know anything about these noises, then? I believe whatever's making such terrible sounds is just over there, in that small clearing. Then that's where we must go. You are such a brave bear, Norman. I can't thank you enough. <clears throat> such embellishments! Thanking Betty, Norman, accompanied by his four friends, began to walk gingerly toward the clearing. As they moved in closer, they all crouched down so the thing could not see them. Freddy took charge again. He said he'd signal for them all to jump into the clearing and take whatever was there by surprise. They waited for the right moment. It seemed like hours, but was in fact only a few seconds. And then Freddy tapped his metal arm against Francine. Ah! Ah! Hey, I get it. We're all on edge. Hello, I'm Norman. You see, the thing wasn't a thing at all. It was a holy, rusty old teapot. Barbara. My name's Barbara. Why are you making such frightening sounds? Uh, a little obvious, don't you think? Leg caught in branch, can't get free, wind blowing through the holes in my body. It doesn't take a brainiac. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Silly me. You see, I've always wanted to be a singer. I found this clearing in the woods far from everyone and came here to practice. But there are so many holes in my body. The wind just blows up and through and in and out and I can't seem to hold a single note. And to make matters worse, I sat down and my foot became trapped. So, there's no horrible ghastly thing here at all then? Of course not. I have been coming here for days and haven't seen anything. There is something here. We must leave right now. Francine has been marking the trees with the chalk we brought. 
Let's just follow them and get out of here. And everyone turned to Francine Kettle, who frantically searched in her pocket to find the chalk which must have fallen out along the path when she got scared and went out of her mind. We're in trouble. Francine has lost the chalk and hasn't been marking our path. <laughs> Trust a kettle. No time for blame now. We've got to get out. We've got to find out how, or else we're up the spout. We're done for. No, we're not. Quick, hand me the cricket bat. We need to loosen Barbara's leg. Now, wizard, my friend, we need a speedy way out of here. Any ideas? Always, young Norman. Everyone grab Dennis. We're going to use him as a catapult. Dennis tried to object, but we had to get on. Drastic measures and actions were needed. In a second, Dennis turned into a catapult, and we were all centipeded. We landed on the grassy knoll by Auntie Pam's front door. And she took us in for tea, and it wasn't long before. Thank you, Harold, you darling squirrel, you. Let's hope they won't be back in a hurry. By now it was time I was getting back. I knew that you soon would be waking. And if you woke up and found I wasn't there, I knew the fuss that you'd be creating. Ghosts indeed, who ever knew The range of things that can scare you And it all happened while you were dreaming So however scary life may be seeming Frightening things can be explained and understood That's what I learned in the house Meanwhile, back in Lisa's bedroom, despite Norman's cheerful, thrillifying story, Lisa was still transfixed by the noises coming from the corner. Not in a story, but in the here and now. Oh, my goodness. What can that be? Now I'm scared. So am I. And only moments ago you were telling me how bold and brave you were. Right. I'm going to walk into that corner right now and see what's there. With me in your arms? No time for discussions, Norman. Onwards, together. We have to get to the bottom of this once and for all. Are you sure we couldn't wait a while and see if the noises go away on their own? Oh, Norman, show some spirit. For some reason, I don't think I like the choice of your words. It's your wardrobe door. No, it's not, Norman. That is a shirt hanging up. Can you no, hear it's not, Norman. Can you Lisa? See me? What, Norman? Can you feel my presence near you? No. How about this? Run! How about the... Did you to know that I was here? I don't mean you any harm. There's no cause for alarm. It's just I'm so lonely. Nobody ever talks to me. So you see, apart from walking through the occasional wall and the odd walk-on in a production of Scrooge, I lead a very solitary existence. You see... I could have been a singer in a cocktail bar All sat in top hat sequins and a mirror ball Not stuck in being scary, just a simple ordinary goo Who is this? And where did she come from? I was just hanging in the back of the wardrobe I see I could have been a pop star or princess of Wales Or be a politician and tell tall tales 
of stuff here being freaky and buildings that are creaky and old. <laughs> Don't cry, Miss Ghost. What's your name? Clementine Dazur von Drugo. Mr. Narrator, what did she say? Don't ask me. Norman, what's the matter, Miss Drugo? Well, you see. It is quite a problem. You know, maybe if you started looking forward rather than back, you might be able to move on to a happier place. You mean, I could free myself from all these chains and fetters. Write fantastic fiction, be a dame of letters. Not stuck here being scary, quite to the contrary, you know. Maybe that's a stretch of the imagination But anyway, it's mostly about not being ghostly In this haunted house anymore Where did Clementine deserve Von Drugel go? You know, Norman, I'm so tired of being frightened all the time Well, not all the time, just at night. But if my dad was here, he'd fight them all. He'd check under the bed, in the cupboard. Emma from school says it's the dark itself I'm afraid of. Sometimes as I stand at the open door, I see Lisa and I see her grandmother all those years ago Maybe it's the cheeky way she smiles whenever she's been bad Or maybe it's the way she looks like her I don't Which she thinks she must care for me When it is the bear whose job it is to care That is just a fact of life And has been throughout history I hope that when she's grown And maybe has a child of her own She will remember her adventures with me. Hear that? I hear nothing. Exactly. A moment's peace. Exactly how nighttime should be. Quiet. Tranquil. Calm. Not scary! Oh, now what? I think you spoke too soon. You think? Tell me something I don't know. Norman, it must be the troll from Trottersfield Snipe. There's only one thing he likes to eat more than children, and that's teddy bears! A troll emerges. Times are hard for a troll like me. I'm always singing the blues. No one knows that this life I lead is not the one I choose. I know what you're thinking when you look at me. 
All your thinking how you're gonna run away Take a proper look and tell me what you see I guarantee you're gonna wanna stay Cause I'm so bad that it's good And perhaps I'm even a bit misunderstood I know I gave you a fright but I've got such an appetite I'd eat this soul room if I could OMG! He better work! When I meet people in their houses late at night All they want to do is run away and cry But I've got to satisfy this appetite I'll eat people fat or thin or baked or fried Cos I'm so bad that it's good And perhaps I'm even a bit misunderstood Little girls, little brothers, I could even Others, I'd eat this soul room if I could You ain't afraid of him, are you? Oh, I'm scared of everything, me! You know, he doesn't bother me! <laughs> the trollets! I'll eat people of all shapes and sizes I'll eat dogs or cats or cuddly toys I'll oh, even eat a ghost but they sure give me gas But my favourite thing by far is little girls and boys Cos I'm so bad! He's so bad. That it's good, and perhaps I'm even a bit misunderstood I know I gave you a fright, but I've got such an appetite I'd eat this old room if I could If he could Do you think he's misunderstood? Not really, I blame the parents I find him very difficult to understand Imagine a world where trolls were normal and trolls Mind up which one I'm gonna eat first. First the bear, then the girl whose juicy, scrumptious flesh will quench my thirst. Cause I'm so bad that it's good and perhaps oh, I'm even no, a bit not misunderstood. I know I gave you a fright, but I've got such an appetite. A snack won't do, I need to find some juice. I don't want to end up in his cooking pot. Here's a thought. What's that? Ever thought about telling him he's not so bad after all? You think he'll listen to reason? There's only one way to find out. Excuse me, Mr Troll. I can offer you one of Norman's fruit shortcakes if you'll spare us. You didn't discuss that with me. Desperate times. Do you value your stuffing? Yes, as a matter of fact. Thought so. Do we have a deal? The troll scratched his head for a moment and then slowly nodded, took the biscuit and shook Lisa's hand. Suddenly, the clown jumped out from the toy box. Hey now, that's not fair. I've been planning this moment for weeks and you settle for a biscuit. Are you crazy? Nope, just have a sweet tooth. I'll not stand for it. We had a deal. And you, Lisa, you have my marker. I'm calling it in. Jump into his mouth and get eaten. What? We had a deal. But... Right away. I guess a deal is a deal. Nothing personal, you understand. Simply business. Well, Mr Troll, if you'd like to open up your mouth, I'll jump in. Are you crazy? I thought you were supposed to be negotiating. Norman, where would the world be if we didn't keep our promises? This is just not right. My dear fellow... If I had an egg for every time I heard that... Yeah, you'd be able to rustle up the world's biggest omelette. Testy. Very testy. Lisa prepared herself to be eaten by the troll. 
Norman trembled. The clown rubbed his hands with glee. The troll readied himself. Goodbye, Norman. Thanks for the memories. How very touching. Are you sure I can't talk you out of this? Too late. I think it's for the best. Oh, so do I. You ready? I'm ready. She's ready. Right. Here I go. Ah, I'm having a little difficulty getting into his mouth. For goodness sake, what's the problem? I really am trying. Very. Let me help. I've been waiting for this. You really are making a meal out of it. So sorry, but I don't seem able. After unsuccessfully trying to push Lisa down the troll's slimy gullet, the clown demonstrated the perfect position to be eaten by a troll. As my pa said, if you want a job doing properly, this is how you do it. The clown fitted himself into the troll's mouth to show Lisa how it's done. But, seizing the opportunity, the troll snapped his jaw shut and with a giant swallow, the clown disappeared in one gulp. No! Imagine a world where you and me could be friends Once upon a time we thought that out the question But see, there's no need to be scared You've got a friend and what a friend in me Never guess the way this bedtime tale would end I only hope that clown won't give you indigestion Just goes to show you, you never know how different from yourself your friends can be Cos I'm so bad Cuddly toys. I'll tell you now, I've made my choice. No more people for my tea. You're gonna see a brand new me. We'll help our new fan friend pull through it. It might look tough, but he can do it. Cause friends are friends no matter who they are. And after all, it's friends. Go ho ho ha. This far. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Norman watched as Lisa calmly gave the troll a little kiss on the cheek. He went all bashful and then waved as he walked back into the dark, spooky corner. Lisa turned and smiled at Norman as she held up the biscuit. Whoops. He forgot to take his fruit shortcake. His loss. I'll have that later. Now, are you going to tell me what's going on? Well, Norman, you see, it's like this. Oh, come on, just tell me. It was all in my head. What was? Well, you only saw what I said I saw. I mean, you didn't know any of the monster's names. Only I did. And when I figured it out, I asked him if he'd like a biscuit instead. You're kidding, right? Makes sense, really. I thought that whatever's in the corner would be nasty, and so it was. When I thought they'd be lovely, it all changed. But the clown, the marker... He was right. I didn't really like him, and only kept him because I thought I had to. When I realised I didn't owe him anything, I thought that the troll should eat him. I just had to get the clown into his mouth. Quite logical, really. If you say so. And another thing. What? I made my troll a vegetarian, so I knew he wouldn't eat me. I get you. Very clever. Thank you, Norman. Coming from you, that means a lot. Well, now that's sorted, can you answer me something? What's that, Norman? If you imagined everything, what's that? In the corner. A pair of big eyes were looking at Lisa and Norman from the dreaded corner. There was a scratching, scuffling, snuffling sound. Ah! As Norman and Lisa clung to each other in a tight embrace, they didn't notice a little dog pad out of the corner, sit by the bed, and lick Lisa's hand. It's about to eat us, Norman! I can feel its hot breath on my skin! Norman opened his eyes and stopped screaming. Lisa was frozen in fright. He looked at the little dog, and then back to Lisa. He tapped her on the arm. What? Why have you stopped screaming? Have you been eaten? Well, if I had, I wouldn't be here, would I? Good point, but... Just open your eyes. Oh! It's just my dog, Brick, Norman. He must have come inside from his kennel to say hello. This isn't your imagination. 
those noises I've been scared of Scared out of my wits by There's nothing to be scared of It's all been you You've been there to show me Just a muddy, paw squelching, nose sniffing, collar clinking little dog who makes the floorboards creak as he pads around the room, scratching his itchy, floppy ear. Who'd have thought it? Remember, Norman, Brick came the same time the noises started. He's been coming up to my room each night and sitting in the corner, watching over us. Would have been good to have known. Saved us both a lot of sleepless nights. And now we can sleep. Our dreams with no fear And if all on the way A monster should stray We will not be alone No, we're not on our own You're here He's been keeping an eye on us for my dad So I know I don't have anything to be frightened of Nothing at all Good boy Sleep tight, Brick Lisa reached over and turned off the bedside light. She drifted off to sleep. Book by Simon James Collier, based on his original stories. Music, lyrics and orchestrations by Richard Bates. Musical direction and orchestra mix by Alex Bellamy. Produced and directed by Simon James Collier. Engineer Ben Robbins. Recorded at the Umbrella Room Studio. Co-producer Adam Deschanel. Cast, Miranda Daw, Jessica Foden, Charlotte George, Rebecca Gilhooley, Jack Porter, Mark Stewart, Ricky Stone, with Mitch Howell, J.B. Newman and David McKechnie.